things just took a very concerning turn on today's model runs. Not only do we have a train of winter storms heading towards the northeast and mid-Atlantic between now and the 28th, we also see a much more impactful snowstorm for New Year's Eve into New Year's Day, meaning this storm would be two years long. All jokes aside, this storm would impact many different regions from the upper Midwest and Northern Plains all the way to the Eastern Seaboard with potentially major snowfall. So in today's forecast, we will be talking about some major Arctic air moving in on two separate occasions coming up very soon and a handful of impactful winter storms. So let's just get right into it. I want to first off show you guys the new winter storm that is popping up on the models today. And this one starts to develop on Tuesday the 30th, again, just before New Year's Eve. And we can see this one diving southward into the northern plains like North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa. We also see some snowfall occurring for Wisconsin, Michigan, and up into Canada as our primary low is primarily located between the Hudson Bay and Great Lakes there. By 7 p.m. here on the 31st, we do see moderate to heavy snowfall occurring for Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, up into Canada. As we keep progressing forward in towards New Year's Day here, 1 a.m. January 1st, 2026, we do see moderate to heavy snowfall now for Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York. And as we keep moving this along, we can see this low begins to try to develop offshore. Meanwhile, we have severe Arctic air diving southward along the East Coast. So this is going to allow for the potential for snowfall pretty low along the mid-Atlantic coastline. And if this low set up differently, it could even be further south than that. For now, we see basically from the Delmarva, Maryland, D.C. area northward, some moderate to heavy snowfall set up along eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, upstate New York, and into New England. This is by the afternoon, and I mean, as we head towards the evening, we see things get even heavier up there for New England. This is 1 a.m. on Friday, January 2nd, and we still see this winter storm impacting folks. And it finally starts to come to an end as we're reaching the morning here, 7 a.m. on Saturday, January 3rd. Potential snowfall for this one would actually be uh, surprisingly not as intense. I do have to use the 10 to 1 ratio, which is a little lower than likely a lot of this would be. But we see the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast all kind of impacted by this one. With the most impacted area being upstate New York into New England, where perhaps 10 inches plus would be possible. Although this system is so far out that these the specifics aren't super critical. It's more so uh, the signal of a storm in general, and in this case, a very major winter storm moving across all of these different regions. Now, let's just segue straight into the temperatures. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of the temperatures before we get into a lot of these northeast snow systems in the northeast and mid-Atlantic happening around Christmas time frame. And then we'll move on to a lot of other impacts later on. We do see that we are warmer right now. That's been no secret lately, Tuesday the 23rd here. I mean, we are really, really warm along the Rockies southern plains into the midwest and parts of the ohio valley especially where we're dealing with temperatures 20 25 30 degrees above normal for a lot of these areas breaking some records in some cases uh wednesday here on the 24th christmas eve we see a lot of that still around very very warm even 30 to 40 degrees above normal now and then even here on christmas day as we've noted over the last few days we see the rockies plains midwest all dealing with these really historically warm temperatures now it's mostly after we move past this point Friday the 26th here, you can see the East Coast seeing a bit of a cool down, but the central state's still really, really ripe. Uh, we do see as we move towards Saturday the 27th, though, we get a little bit of Arctic air out there back west, and this is actually going to be able to move in, believe it or not. It kind of shoves the warm air out, and we begin to see this moving down for Sunday the 28th. The 29th here, it's fully moved in for the eastern states, and now we went from 30, 40 degrees above normal to... 10 20 degrees below normal so we're looking at massive massive temperature swings here and that one lasts for the east coast all the way until new year's eve and then with that major winter storm that we see move in we get another arctic blast moving in for the 31st here into the first of january where we see not only 10 to 20 degrees below normal but in these bluish shades 20 25 degrees below normal and these magentas 25 to 30 degrees below normal so a massive arctic blast perhaps right around new year's and that one does last a couple of days here we see the east coast still dealing with these really cold temperatures for friday on january 2nd saturday january 3rd it's starting to move out and then we do eventually warm up on this model all things must come to an end but really really severe cold compared to what we were seeing just a few days ago 
Let's take a look here at the simulated radar for this pre-Christmas snowstorm, though. I want to talk about this one for Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. It's already going on right now as we're talking. We do still expect a little bit more for New England. By the time you're watching this video, it's probably going to be around this point. So we will see upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Maine still seeing some snowfall. And a lot of areas between New Hampshire and Maine here, we see overnight, 1 a.m. here tonight, still seeing heavy snowfall. And even by sunrise tomorrow, 6 7 a.m., something in there, where they could deal with 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 inches of snowfall. I can't believe I just did 6, 7 twice right there. Uh, as we move past that, though, we do see that eventually come to an end. It, it wants to stick around into the afternoon for parts of Massachusetts as that wind kind of turns from moving towards the west. More southerly, uh, it's able to really swing a lot of this snowfall down. Maybe P Boston, areas like that, it will pick up an extra inch maybe from this type of impact. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, but that comes to an end, and then as we reach Christmas morning, look at this. Uh, we have a lot of snow showers. This is looking heavier and heavier every single model run, but we see upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, even into Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, seeing some snow showers during the morning and afternoon of Christmas Day. So some more flakes flying, truly a white Christmas in these areas if that occurs with a bit of snowfall still on the ground. So the biggest impact here is travel, though, with this initial snowstorm. So if you're traveling today or into the overnight, just be super careful. There will be snow coming down, obviously, and that's just going to be really disruptive, to say the least. Total snowfall for this time frame is going to generally be a dusting up to an inch or two in the grays, which we see for a lot of areas in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and southern New York, and southern New England. It's mostly as you head towards... Uh, the Adirondack Mountains of New York and into New England where we deal with two to six inches perhaps in the blues and even six to ten in those purple shades where again between New Hampshire and Maine we're maybe pushing eight nine ten inches of snowfall before it's all said and done. Now the ice with this one is going to be pretty minor. Uh, we do see a little bit on top of the snow for parts of Pennsylvania and New York maybe there along the Berkshires uh, between Vermont and uh, Massachusetts but Pretty minimal with this one, which is going to be very different than the next one because the one that's coming after Christmas here is going to feature a lot of ice, perhaps, uh, which could be insanely impactful. So for those of you who have traveled away from home before Christmas and are going to be traveling back home after Christmas, this one is also going to impact you on the way back home. We see this one start to move in for Friday the 26th around 1 p.m. Eastern for Pennsylvania, New York. And we see some snowfall in the northeastern side of things and then on the southwestern side of things. Heavy freezing rain coming down for parts of New York, Pennsylvania, uh, West Virginia, Maryland, even into D.C. and Northern Virginia there. A lot of heavy snowfall there for northeast Pennsylvania, northern and central New Jersey, New York City, Long Island, Connecticut. This seems to maybe be the bullseye that we're watching for that area for this particular system. And this is 1 a.m. on Saturday. As we keep going, that does lighten up, obviously, and start to come to an end. Uh, and for total snowfall with this one, we do see a widespread area of grays where it would be one to three inches of snowfall, perhaps. The blues, two to six for a lot of the Finger Lakes there, a lot of upstate New York in general, eastern Pennsylvania, uh, even parts of southern Jersey with this one. Uh, but really the bullseye would be for areas in northern Jersey, New York City, Long Island perhaps. If this trended north, I could see it more so being Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. Uh, we're trying to figure out where that bullseye is exactly going to set up, but this could be a plowable snowfall event for a lot of areas here. The freezing rain with this one, like I said, would be huge. Uh, we see anywhere from a quarter of an inch to half an inch of freezing rain for parts of New York, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, uh, Maryland, D.C., but the heart of it would be over central Pennsylvania, west central Pennsylvania, somewhere in there. It does appear right now where you're get, getting kind of the best chance of seeing maybe close to a half inch of freezing rain, which is significant. That's not only a travel concern at this point, which it's a terrible travel concern, but we're talking about branches, power lines, all sorts of other impacts as well from something like this. So we really need to pay attention closely. Looking at the bigger system that we were talking about earlier, we can kind of pin down the timing, but... Uh, we do see that uh, third system. We talked about this one yesterday, but for the 29th, we do see a storm system moving through that might bring some wintry weather, especially for far upstate New York and then into northern New England with maybe some additional snowfall for the Adirondacks, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. But what's new? I mean, continuous snowfall up there, that's an every year occurrence. So we just get another one of those. Some lake effect snowfall moving in afterwards for the 30th here. 
And then here comes that new system that we were talking about today, swinging through the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and then up into the Northeast. And this is when that low develops offshore. This is interesting and very curious. If this could swing around further southward and get more of a northward mo motion, I could see this being a very vertical type of snowstorm with this type of trough. Although it's so far out, it pains me uh, because this is kind of the setup that everybody's been waiting for. Uh, unfortunately, it's very far out. We still need to watch it closely. So take it with a bit of a grain of salt, but we're going to continue to track this time frame. It looks like Arctic air is on the way for this New Year's time frame. So if we get a storm system, uh, this is certainly possible. I wanted to talk about something else as well. Severe weather and thunderstorms seems to be a potential concern around Sunday the 28th. This is our CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy. Really just look at it as thunderstorm food. So wherever you see the blues and greens, there is thunderstorm food available uh, for them to eat and grow. So we see a lot of that for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and even up into parts of the Ohio Valley. Uh, again, this is Sunday at 10 a.m. here on December 28th. And watch what happens here on our European model uh, after 10 a.m. here, we see some thunderstorms perhaps firing up for states like, again, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, up into Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia maybe even. Uh, we'll need to be watching this closely, and it could come with a uh, severe weather risk as well, as we mentioned earlier. There's a cold front swinging through. We have a lot of warm, moist uh, just overall humid air to the south with this cold dry air slamming in from the north and that conflict between those two air masses can really amplify things uh, with the jet stream being nearby there'd probably be plenty of shear so this is a setup to watch for perhaps at least thunderstorm activity maybe even severe weather so quickly let's just do an overview here for the entire pattern ahead on the european model and I didn't talk too much about the West. There is going to be obviously a ton of storms. We'll see it on this portion of the video. But as we move forward, we get snowstorm number one here for the 23rd into the 24th. For uh, the Northeast there and parts of the Mid-Atlantic, we do see a continuous really stormy pattern out west where by the way flooding is a massive concern here in southern california not only the, over the next few days but into the next week or so because they have another big rain event perhaps moving into that area where they have a high chance of excessive rainfall i posted that on twitter and facebook last night we do see continued wintry weather out west as well for the cascades Sierra Nevada and Rockies. Uh, this is after Christmas now, and we see that next snow system move through for the uh, Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. I would call it more of a winter storm though, since we have the ice involved as well. And then that's really when we start to talk about the potential thunderstorms and severe weather underneath. Uh, right here between our trough moving in and our ridge that is being shoved out essentially. We do get another brief winter storm up there in the Northeast that does have some potential, but is looking like the most minor of the three that we have upcoming for that area in my opinion that moves out and arctic air moves in for the 29th 30th again as we kind of move past that and get to new year's eve we see this next major winter storm really diving southward bringing some snowfall to the northern plains upper midwest great lakes uh, for the afternoon of Wednesday on the 31st. And then as we head towards the evening, that's more the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast there. As this low starts to form offshore, we get more intensification there for Thursday on the 1st, New Year's Day. And really, meanwhile, we have severe Arctic air in the east. So this is going to be extremely cold New Year's Day there along all of these eastern areas. You don't get more textbook than this. I mean, ridge in the west, trough in the east. There's no way around it. Continued storminess out west again. That is just going to continue to be an impact. Maybe some other thunderstorm and severe weather concerns here for the deeper south areas into the lower Midwest as we get a little bit of a milder pattern afterwards on this model run. Keep in mind, this is beyond 10 days, so we take it with a grain of salt. That moves towards the east, and we continue to see wintry weather out west for the Sierra Nevada, uh, Rockies, and Cascades, and continued rainfall for all the lower elevation areas. I think flooding is going to continue to be a bigger concern as time goes on out there. As long as this Pacific jet doesn't slow down, it's not stopping anytime soon. I mean, this is a huge, huge, huge concern out there. Total precipitation, as you can see, is gargantuan for the west coast, as we were talking about, including Southern California right here, which basically has the highest totals on the map, maybe 10 inches plus of precipitation for some of those uh, mountain ranges just to the north of LA. Uh, really, really concerning amounts of rainfall. You also have to consider, um, obviously all that rain coming downhill is gonna build up in the lower elevation areas where they've already seen a ton of rainfall too. So really nasty situation out there. 
Uh, really concerned about that personally, and we see along the east decent amounts of precipitation, really. Total snowfall is interesting. We see a ton out west, obviously, with the continued storminess. Northern Plains, Midwest, Ohio Valley, into the Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast is all looking decent. Uh, this isn't like crazy far to the south. I do want to take note that a lot of this is from that bigger winter storm that we see around New Year's. A lot of this is as well. You can see it's just offshore. If this storm was further west, just a little bit, all of that would be on shore for these areas, which would obviously be insane. So imagine this further to the west and basically huge totals all the way up and down. It's very vertical. It's reminiscent of uh, the Boxing Day 2010 storm. But again, it's just so far out. So we'll have to see if this continues to be a threat for when that trough moves in or not. But we're going to track it here on the channel every single day. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.